I would say, um, write something in the comments. I uh, will give my little welcome speech in a few minutes, but we do have Stephanie Thompson Green um, oh. waiting to be our guest. So um, just give us a few minutes and uh, provide some comments because we would love to um, see what you say. So give us a few minutes. And I'm actually going to pull Stephanie down for a second and until I give my introduction. So one second. <laughs> oh, she came back on. I guess I can either. <laughs> I think you can. I don't know. But I'm here. Yes. All right, everyone. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I appreciate this. Welcome to my first Girl Chat Live. Tonight, we're going to talk about uh, all things real estate. And I first would just like to um, let you know that um, you can see in the right hand screen my book, um, as I am the author of A Brown Girl's Guide to Employment and Networking. And this is uh, a topic that is uh, a passion, um, a passion of mine. And so I just think it's important that, you know, especially during this crisis, that we are just aware of other opportunities that are available to us. And what better time, you know, than to learn about real estate? Because just because, you know, the country is closed, the real estate industry is still moving and we have so many transferable skills. So without further ado, I am going to invite Stephanie Thompson Green uh, to join us. There she is. So <laughs> hello. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it being the first guest on Girl Chat, um, talking all things real estate tonight. And so I just want to share with you um, that, you know, we do know each other. Uh, you sold, uh, you know, a house for me a few years ago, then you found another house for me last year. So I, you know, I highly recommend you. And I also want to support small business during this uh, pandemic that is happening across um, the United States. So, you know, I love talking, um, you know, all things workforce and what, you know, what not better industry than to talk about um, the real estate industry. So, you know, if you could just, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, let's start off with that. And, you know, talk a little bit about if you would, because there's people, first of all, there's 15 million people right now on unemployment, right? Mm -hmm. And so I would love if you could talk about a little bit about how you got into the industry, because you've been in for almost three years now. So it's not something that you've been doing for 20 years. You, you know, you transitioned from another industry. Mm -hmm. So if you could talk a little bit about that, um, and, and a little bit about yourself. <laughs> sure thing. So thanks again. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, true story. We are certainly friends. We know each other. Um, I love when my clients become friends and uh, she was a friend before being a client. So um, I'm honored to be the first guest on uh, your chat and I look forward to so many more as well. Uh, so guys, I am Stephanie. As Tamika mentioned, I did transition into real estate full time uh, about three years ago and I came from a leadership career managing an amazing team in the aviation industry. Shout out to my JetBlue peeps <laughs> if you're watching. Um, so it, it was definitely a great transition for me. Um, the way I got into real estate, um, my uncle actually nudged me and said, hey, I think you'd be good at this. He actually uh, is a realtor. And um, he nudged me and he said, I think you'd be great at this. I think you should go get your license. And at that time, honestly, I, I was focused on my full-time career. Um, I had no intentions on leaving. I absolutely put all my energy 
energy into uh, my full-time career. Um, that being said, though, I am a big fan of buildable skills. Tamika, I know you talk a lot about stackable credentials. So let me say, I wasn't afraid of starting another business um, or stepping into entrepreneurship again. Uh, I have owned businesses in the past. I still work with life coaching clients. So um, that wasn't the reason I didn't want to do it. I just had all of my energy focused um, on my full-time career. That was my path at the time. But because I am a big fan of the buildable skills, um, I, I took the test and you know I took the course, I took the test, I got my license and I did help my uncle um, for a little bit. Um, but then something actually happened and I, I had an injury and I couldn't work at my full-time career. I couldn't even do real estate. I was really laid up for a little bit. <laughs> um, but I fully believe God puts you in situations where he needs you to take uh, a leap of faith. And um, I did end up returning to my full-time career. But in those moments, um, I stayed there maybe for about a month later. And then I had to make the leap. Um, I, I left my full-time career, took an early retirement there, and stepped into real estate full-time. So that's Great. kind of how I got in there. <laughs> And so, Stephanie, you know, there's people that are sitting home saying, you know, I hear you, but how am I going to, you know, transition into, you know, real estate by sitting home? So maybe you can talk a little bit about, you know, the number of hours that it takes to, you know, study for the test and how much it costs <laughs> for the test, because a lot of people um, are on unemployment. And so they are eligible for training funds through their oh. state. Yep. And so maybe, you know, they're thinking, OK, I'm on unemployment. This would be a great time to transition. But really, how many hours does it take to study for the test and what is the cost? So the cost will vary um, because the very first thing you need to do is find a school. You need to find the real estate school. So there are certain approved schools um, that Mass.gov can show you. Um, so if you go to mass.gov, you'll be able to see, you know, all the approved schools there. Um, but I will just say, you know, pro tip, don't be afraid to look on Groupon or, you know, any of those uh, discounting sites because um, the course is a certified course. So whether this school teaches it or this school, um, you're going to get the same training. So, um, you know, obviously the instructors will be a little different. So you want to search out and, and figure out, you know, what school would be best for you, but don't be afraid to, you know, maybe look on Groupon for, you know, um, in, in, especially in these times, we, we might need a little help there. So uh, don't be afraid for that, but the course will vary, um, you know, for, for the price. So definitely do some research there, but it's a 40 hour course. So, so some schools do that over, you know, certain weeknights, some do like weekend blast and you're done in a few weekends. So um, it's really about researching the course, you know, how the school sets it up uh, and go from there. Um, after you take the course, um, your instructor will certify your paperwork and all of that. And you'll go before the board to be approved. Uh, once you go before the board, then you can then take your test. Uh, you have to pass your test. I believe it's with a 70. Don't quote me. We'll have to look that up. But um, you have to pass it with a 70. Some people don't pass it on the first try, and, and that's quite okay. But I will say you definitely want to put time in studying. So um, is, if this is something that you're looking to move forward into, um, perfect time because you have this study time right now if you're you know been affected with um this COVID-19 business so um yeah so that's pretty much the process um once you get certified you get your um license then you have to hang your license at a brokerage and there's many different brokerages that you can choose um i am with keller williams realty but you might have seen other ones just when you're driving around, you might see signs of, for Jack Conway or Coldwell Banker or and any of the other brokerages. And you might have one that's just a boutique brokerage that it's just one broker and maybe one team owner. So, um, you know, that's another part of the process. Once you get your license, finding out where you want to kind of hang your hat. But uh, that's kind of the process in a nutshell. OK. And so let's talk about today. So, you know, in this pandemic, because, you know, thinking about, you know, the country is, you know, mostly closed. But is real estate closed? Like, what is your day looking like now? Talk a little bit about, you know, what's happening right now in the industry. If I want to sell a house, is this the right time to, you know, you know, sell a house? Should should someone contact you to say, I want to sell a house? Is the equity still going to be in their house? So maybe you can talk a little bit about what's happening right now. Is this a good time to, you know, when you talked about getting in the industry, but is this also a good time to sell? 
Yeah. So the thing with real estate, and this is pandemic or no pandemic, it's very individual to the person that is involved in the transaction, right? So um, as a whole, the market is definitely still moving. We have homes that are still being sold. Buyers are still coming to find a new house. Um, but things are very different um, than they were six months ago. Six months ago, you didn't need a mask and gloves to be going into places. Um, we're in a very unique situation, I think, because real estate, um, based on the state that you're living in, um, some people have stay at home orders and they can't you know, even go show homes. Here in Massachusetts, um, Governor Baker did say we are essential. So we are deemed essential. Um, so you do still have people that have to move. So um, I just picked up a client this, this week that um, unfortunately she's in a situation where she's gotta get out of that situation, right? So that's essential and we're gonna help her through that process. But then, um, you know, typically, especially in this spring and summer market, people just start liking to, you know, be out at open houses and do all that. So we've really seen that kind of downturn because we're not hosting um, a, a lot of open houses or anything because we can't control those type of crowds right now. So um, it's definitely different, but the real estate market is still moving. So can you talk a little bit about, um, first of all, congratulations. I know that you've won awards the past <laughs> two years um, in your industry. And so could you just, you know, tell us a little bit about the award you received? And then I would like to kind of transition that into talking about soft skills, you know, needed in this industry. You know, I think it's important yeah. as someone that speaks about employment, you know, I don't want people to go into an industry where, you know, if they're not a team builder <laughs> or they don't like helping others or they're not personable. So, you know, just tell us a little bit about let's let's talk about your awards first and then we'll talk about some skills. But it would be great just to let the people know, um, you know, someone that started really from zero, you were transitioning, like you said, from the aviation industry, and then you won these awards, which is amazing. Um, so talk a little bit about that. And then we'll talk a little bit about soft skills. Oh, great. Well, wow, you're really blowing me up. So thank you. for that. <laughs> um, So yeah, so for the awards, so 2018, um, I did win the rookie of the year award. And that was, um, you know, my first full year um, in full time real estate. So that was really exciting, completely unexpected. I didn't even know that rookie of the year was an award. So um, that was completely unexpected. And that was great. And I also won. Um, a, I was a bronze award winner. So every sales um, category is tiered. So I was a bronze award winner. And then last year, so 2019, I actually doubled my business from 2018. So that was very exciting. And I won top performer in my sales category as well. Um, 2020 first quarter was definitely shaping up to be great. Um, but I think this pandemic has definitely, you know, real estate included, but all businesses um, has, have really had to take a step back and reevaluate, you know, what does 2020 look like? So um, for me, I'm a very positive person. Um, I'm going to remain positive. And I think just in any industry, as long as you have the best intention for helping others, it's all going to work out for the best. So um, that's kind of how my three years of awards, if you would, <laughs> uh, have gone. Um, and so, so okay. let me ask you, so, you know, not everyone wins rookie of the year. You were the only one that won rookie of the year. Um, so I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, talk a little bit about the soft skills needed for this industry. Why do you think you've been so successful, oh. but also someone behind the camera might be saying, well, you know, I don't like to smile. I don't like to, <laughs> you know, I don't like to, uh, no. I'm, a, I'm an introvert. Can this industry still be, you know, for me? Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about the soft skills needed to join this industry, because, you know, I, I believe you mentioned, you know, all you have to be is 18 to join. I have a social <laughs> security number. Yep. Um, so talk a little bit about the soft skills needed for this industry. Yeah, definitely. So I think you're right. You know, it takes all types of people in all types of industries. And, you know, some people lean and gravitate more towards a particular industry. I think the beauty in real estate is I work with people that don't like to smile too much. <laughs> and I, you know, I clearly am someone who likes to smile. I'm an extrovert. Um, but in my 
you know, circle in my team, I have people that, you know, don't like to smile too much and just want to get right to business. I have, you know, the fluffy, the huggers and, and all of us. I have people that really pay close attention to detail. So it, I think it's a career that you can make um, fit your skills. So I, I think that's really great. I, I think one thing you definitely want to have is a heart for people because this is a people business. Like you're literally um, people are trusting you with their largest assets and, you know, you're, you're, um, you want to have their best intentions at heart. So you want to be a listener. You want to be able to spend some time with them, understand what their motivation is, what their needs are so that you can best help them get to the next step for what they are looking to do. Great. And so would you encourage a working mother to join? Um, not, well, the mother would be working, <laughs> but would you encourage a mother or a dad that's leading a family to join this industry. Um, what has it allowed you, you know, as a mom, what's some of the things that it's allowed you versus uh, when you used to work in aviation per se, uh, you know, hundred hours a week or whatever it is, but what, you know, what are some of the, the benefits of being this industry in this industry as, as a mom? So, a lot of people start businesses because they say, I just want to be my own boss and I don't want to have to work on a schedule. I will tell you this business is a little crazy because you're actually working um, with clients for the most part after their working hours, right? So if someone wants to go look at a house, but they work nine to five, you're going to be showing them a house at six or mm -hmm. on the weekend or something like that. So I don't want people to be misled and thinking, oh, it's going to be a great career and I'll just work my hours that I want to. Again, like I said, it's really a people business. So you really got to focus on the people and what their needs are. If they have to meet Saturday mornings at 10 a.m., that's what we're doing. We're not sleeping in, right? So I think that's really important to note. Um, but it absolutely has given me the flexibility. So when I was in um, my previous career, I mean, my daughter runs track, um, you know, she, she does really well. And I love watching her. Like her, she has perfected her craft and it really makes me happy just to watch her. Um, I now have the flexibility to actually be, I know the past two years I have been at every single meet. It has not hindered me in any way because I can work my schedule for the most part around um, those track meets because I live by my calendar. So as long as they're on my calendar already, I can let a client know, no, I'm sorry, you know, that's family time uh, at that time. So I would say, you know, for the moms or dads that are looking to get into the career, um, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, it could provide you and your family for, um, you know, it, it could definitely provide for your family for generations to come too. you know, if, if that's what you want to build on your legacy. So. And based on what you said, if there's yeah. someone on this, <laughs> on this live that maybe is under 30, no children could be still in college as college students, is this the type of industry that you can work part time, right? Because can you, you know, just say, I only want to put, you know, 15 hours, 20 hours in as one that believes in several streams of income, not just, you know, I think anything through this crisis that, you know, just, you know, shifting the subject a little bit, is that you know it's important to always have several streams of income which is why i talk about stackable credentials so much because uh -huh. when you have stackable credentials that means that you're marketable you can have different businesses you're learning new things and you can go off in different areas so maybe yeah. you can speak to the people that are under 30 no children you know in college you know building their credentials whether they're getting a bachelor's degree a master's degree whatever it is but is this that type of industry that can generate another stream of income for them as they're going to school um, and trying to open other businesses too. Would you recommend that? And then we have a question. So I'll take a question after that. Um, so. so here's the thing uh, you mentioned it and we had talked about it before you got to be 18 years old. So yeah. those that are graduating from high school, um, getting ready to go to college, get your license, get your, get your real estate <laughs> license. Now, now here's the thing. There are fees that come along with, you know, having a license. You're going to have to continue your education and, and you know, pay for, um, you know, your fees at your brokerage or, or things like that. So there are fees involved in this business. However, um, it, it gives you the flexibility. If you 
this career is a career where if you are working another, you know, full-time job or, you know, looking to build another business, whatever it is, um, if you want to sell three houses a year, sell three houses a year. If that's your goal, you can do right. that. If you want to sell one right. house a year, you know, if a college student just over the summer wants to work during the summer, sell a couple right. of houses, that's beautiful. But you have to have the license in order to do it. And right. you have to have, you know, um, your license at a brokerage to do that. But uh, absolutely, I would say if you're 18, you got your social security number and you're <laughs> looking for another stream of income, um, it, definitely research the possibility of being a realtor. And so, you know, you mentioned earlier, you, you know, you have to work for a broker until, you know, until you have your license for three years. And can you just talk a little bit about that before we take a question? Um, you know, you're almost at that point where you, you know, you've going to have your license for three years. So can you just talk a little bit about if someone, um, is thinking about their future. They're envisioning this. Okay, they're going to study for the test. They, you know, they work under a broker, and then they hit that three-year mark. What is the next point? Like, what happens from that point? How does that work? So it's again, this is a very individual career for people. So there are going to be people that have their license for twenty-five years. I know plenty of them that never wanted to be a broker. So okay. you don't have to transition into being a broker. Okay. Um, people that want to transition to be a broker more than likely will want to have a team that they work with underneath them and build a business from there. So they might want to have their own brokerage or, I mean, I could still become a broker and still work with my Keller Williams family. So it doesn't mean you have to separate. It's just a whole new set of guidelines. Um, and it's really what you want to do. It, it's setting up your goals for your future. So when I talk about legacy building and, you know, I just mentioned, you know, build a career for your entire family, um, that's on my agenda. So that's going to happen, whether it's this year or five years from now, eventually that will happen um, because that's me vision boarding and right. you know, moving forward. So it really is individually up to the, the realtor, you know, what they want to do. So you don't have to become a broker, but in order to become a broker, you have to have um, your real estate license for three years, work under a broker for three years, and they have to sign off your credentials and, and things that you've done. So um, yeah, so it, it's definitely part of, you know, of the next step if that's what you want, but you don't have to do that. Okay. And we have a question. So I'm going to take a question. And the question is, how do you think COVID-19 will affect the real estate industry? Yeah, that's a very relevant question. So um, we are definitely spending a lot. When I say we, I mean realtors, not just from Keller Williams. I'm on a call every morning, eight o'clock, every morning, 930. You know, we're doing um, a lot of Zoom calls, as I know a lot of people are, um, but we're really spending time together. Um, it's brought us together to really do some research um, as to what might happen. Now, I certainly can't predict the future and, and I don't think anyone can. But what we can look at is trends. And so a lot of people refer this to kind of, is this the housing crash of 2008, 2009? What I can say right now, it's not, um, because back then people didn't have equity and that's what's different right now. People still have a lot of equity in their homes. So we haven't seen that crash. Um, because it's, it's just different. People have, you know, sustainable equity in their homes, but to that point, I don't know what will happen in the future. So when I'm talking individually with a seller or a buyer, we're talking about their individual situation and is right now the, the right time for you to, to move forward um, right. because we don't know, you know what's going to happen in three months or five months. But um, that's what I would say. If we're trying to equate it, that's the best um, analogy I can give is it, it's not like 2008 or 2009 only because we don't see you know people lacking in the equity so yeah. um, does that kind of help with that yeah that's a good that's a great um that's a great answer so if you're just now joining us shout out to jessica and ciola and eric who are joining us on this live um thank you very much for joining us my name is tamika jacques i'm the author of a brown girl's guide to employment and networking joined here with stephanie thompson green of thompson green homes keller williams realty and she's answering some questions so steph you have another question sure and the question um, is from Ciola. Do you recommend a realty license if interested in investment property getting into house flipping? That's a great question. Hmm. Yeah. So 
invest, I work with a lot of investors um, as their agent. So um, it's really, I, I guess I need a little more information, uh, you know, and we can certainly talk offline. I'll share my information with you um, because if you want to become a realtor, and then personally flip the houses, there's some liability there that you'll have to disclose that you're the realtor, you'll have to disclose that you have an interest in the house, that kind of thing. But if you want to become a realtor and work with investors, then of course, you want to get your realtor's license and um, you know move on from there um, to help the, the flips go on. So um, if you're looking to more be like the project manager, um, there's a little tricky stuff in there. So we should definitely, you know, we can definitely talk a little more offline about it if you'd like but um i think to answer the question if you, if you want to be involved in the flip you might not want to have your license because there's some liabilities there but um not to say that it doesn't happen but you just want to make sure you're covered great and so um i just wanted to you know I think this is a great industry to join you know you've talked a little bit about you know you have to be 18 and so you know it is, um, uh, um, sorry, I looked down at the question and Ciola said, <laughs> looking to purchase and flip. So, um, you know, I don't know, you know, so if that can, would determine it. So we can it. definitely talk, um, if you can just hook us up later, uh, Tamika. Yes, so okay. We can definitely yes. talk because if, you know, like I said, there, there's just some, um, there's some separation that needs to happen if you also want to be the one that's flipping and owning the house. So, um, you know, if, if you want to be that realtor, there's just some liabilities. So we want to make sure that you're covered in that. So, um, okay. yeah. so we will hook you up with, yes, right. we will provide you information. I'm Sounds sorry. Good. I just, I, I looked down. I shouldn't have the question because I was trying to ask a question at the same time, but we will um, pass on your information to see. Sure. And so I was wondering if you could talk about, you know, in Massachusetts specifically, there is 55% of the workforce is women mm -hmm. in Massachusetts. And so, what does that mean for the real estate industry? What I'm not sure if you know the percentage of women that are part of the real estate industry, but if you could talk a little bit about, you know, what does that look like as a woman? You know, do you face any challenges as a woman of color, you know, in this industry? Um, you know, especially because, you know, it's real in Massachusetts. You know, we have a lot of women working, but we don't have a lot of women that are business owners or on that track like you are, you know, on to, to become to have your own brokerage. So just I was just wondering if you could just give us some insight, you know, on that as we do have working moms out there they want their own business and looking to see, you know, some of the challenges that you might, you know, have faced. You've had many successes with your awards, but what are some challenges that you can talk about? So to answer your first question, I don't know the percentages, you know, male to female. Um, I think what's interesting about this particular career is even if there's you know, 40 men in my office and a hundred women in my office, it doesn't really matter um, because my business is my business. So when I go to, you know, another house to uh, work with another buyer's agent or um, another seller's agent, when I'm doing that, it's just that agent and me, right? So it's not like this big corporation and, um, you know, so it, it's very, again, and I've said it, you know, a couple of times throughout this, but it's very individual. So it's me working with another person, um, another realtor to, to kind of work these things out. Um, I've worked with great, amazing realtors and I've worked with some that left some things to be desired. Right. So um, it, it's all individual with, with that. But um, I mean, some challenges as far as a woman of color, um, I think there's just sometimes some ignorance out there. And um, I remember my first year sitting at a table with, um, you know, some people um, that really didn't know who I was, but then I won this award and they were like, wow, who is this person? So <laughs> they really wanted to kind of learn who I was. And I'll never forget, it, you know, it really struck me, but the realtor said to me, wow, do you think you're getting a lot of your clients because of your race? <laughs> and wow. it just really struck me because I, I, 
the woman really was heartfelt. Like it, it didn't seem like she was trying to be derogatory or anything, mm -hmm. but she was just ignorant to the fact like, no, I'm getting my business the same way you have to go hustle for right. your business. Like business is not just coming to me because of my race, right? So um, so I would say sometimes there's a challenge, you know, with, with um, learning and, and just people not knowing, you know, but in general, I, I, like I said, it's very individual and I can hold my own. So, you know, if someone's going right. to come up, we're going to, you know, figure this out really quickly. So. Right. Okay. Well, you know, thanks for sharing that personal story because I think that's, you know, in Massachusetts or wherever you are, it's just important to know some of the challenges that are going to be faced. Yes, you've had many successes, um, but there are challenges to each industry. And it's important, you know, just to, to be open and, and to know that what you will um, face. But on the flip side of that, we know that you know, in 2019, that you were successful because, you know, when you work for a brokerage and when you hit a certain amount of sales, <laughs> you get to keep all your commissions and you did that. So <laughs> maybe you can just talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, we have a few more minutes, but just maybe talk a little bit about that. And then, you know, there is one more question there, but I will, but I just, if you could just share, you know, a little bit about how, you know, that happened that you yeah. hit your sales and then you didn't have to give any commission to <laughs> your broker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was a very exciting time. Um, and, and here's the thing, every brokerage is different. So when you finally get your license and then you're shopping for, you know, which brokerage do I want to hang my license at? Like we were talking about earlier. Um, that's definitely one of the things you want to consider. Like, um, as I mentioned, there's going to be fees involved that you have to pay your broker. Um, and in my case, in my office, I'm blessed that once I hit a certain amount, I keep 100%. And yes. um, 2018, I didn't quite hit that. Um, I was still getting started. I was that rookie of the year. But 2019, whew, what a glorious time. Yes, <laughs> I did. And, and it is. It's just such a freeing feeling. Um, because it's like you work towards a goal and you make it happen. So, um, yes. Yeah, so again, every brokerage will be different. Some brokerages don't do it that way. Some brokerages, the most you can get is 90% of your commission and, uh, you'll have to give them 10. Um, but my brokerage, uh, once I hit a certain level of sales, I can get a hundred percent. So yes, I love about that. <laughs> well, congratulations. And I just want to finish out with two questions. Uh, okay. one is how long is the schooling or self preparation for the real estate? license? Um, yeah, so we touched on it before. So it's a 40 hour course. Um, some uh, schools will do that over, you know, a week, um, you know, hard and heavy, you know, eight hours a day. Some uh, will do, a, you know, two night classes over a series of weeks. Some do weekend blast classes. So it's really just researching the approved schools and seeing, um, you know, how you want to get that done. But the actual coursework is a 40 hour course um, that you need to go through. Um, the study time, though, I would put time in. Um, you want to schedule your test while you're um, you know, still fresh because you just took the, the class, but you want to give yourself some time. I think I did like three weeks in between my course ending and hard and heavy studying throughout. Um, there's, you know, apps that you can get. There's some resources for studying um, that were very helpful for me. And I could certainly share if, if anyone needed those, you know, once they start going through the process, um, just hit me up. But um, yeah, so I would say definitely put that study time in plan for that um, because you want to be able to pass and, and not have to take the test over and over. Great. And the last question comes right. from my sister, Tanya Rabowin. And the question is, this was a career change for you, mm -hmm. um, which you talked a little bit about earlier. And if someone is interested in changing careers, what are some attributes? We talked a little bit about skills that someone should possess to become a successful real estate agent, because there's <laughs> some agents that don't sell anything. They say they're a real estate agent, right? <laughs> so maybe. Yeah. So, and yeah, we did. We touched on it a yeah. little bit. You have to, my one criteria, I, I think, to evaluate yourself is how do I relate with people? Okay. So it doesn't mean that you have to be this happy, bubbly, outgoing personality. Um, but it does mean that you have to be able to relate to people um, because as I mentioned before, these people are trusting you with maybe their biggest asset that they have, right? Um, so you wanna be able to give them good advice, good sound advice, um, help them through the process. I find myself being a coach throughout the entire process because 
um, you know, especially first time home buyers, like you need to coach them through each step because they've never done this before versus an investor that's, you know, flipping these properties, you know, you might not have to coach him through a lot um, or, or her through a lot, but um, you know, it, it's really individual. So I'd say definitely the skill you want to, you know, evaluate within yourself is how do I relate to people? And then everything else starts falling into place. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for all those questions. I appreciate all of you um, who asked the questions. And Stephanie, how does someone get in touch with you? Um, how could they find you? <laughs> yeah. So I think the easiest way is probably social media. That's where we are right now. So um, you can get me on Instagram or Facebook um, at Realtor Steph T. OK, so at Realtor Steph T. And I know to me, you'll share that out a little later. Um, but all my information is there, my phone, my website, my everything. So I think that's the best way you can direct you know dm me whatever you need to do um but at realtor steph t great thank mm -hmm. you so much for being the first uh uh, participants on our girl chat. I appreciate it. And I just wanted to say to everyone that's listening, if there's an industry that you feel that you would like to know more about, um, drop it in the comments, send me, you know, a direct message, let me know, send me an email um, at Dr. T Jacques. Um, at gmail.com or you can go on my website drtjock.com and you can leave me a message and just tell me you know who else should i be interviewing is there something someone else that you would like to know about or an industry that you're thinking of transferring into so again thank you so much for joining us tonight remember okay. um that uh stay stay healthy be safe and I appreciate everyone that has joined us tonight. And I look forward to seeing you guys in a few weeks. So keep your eyes out. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Take care, guys. Thanks. <laughs>